G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. This time we're going to look at lighting. There are two different main types of lighting in Space Engineers. There's spotlights and there's interior lights. These two behave quite differently and we'll demonstrate that here. So we'll start with the interior lights. We can turn both of these on and if we increase their maximum range, which is their radius, crank that right up out to 20 meters. And then we'll have a look at what's going on on the other side of this wall. Now if the lighting were fully realistic, we'd expect this wall to block all of the light. We'd expect to see some degree of shadow behind this control panel here. That's not what we see. What we see is the light affecting every block that has a direct line to that light source. Doesn't matter whether there's another block interrupting it, doesn't matter whether there's another player, whether there's anything in between. All it checks is that this face faces the light source and is within the radius. That's not true for spotlights. If we toggle those interior lights off and we turn on the spotlight, this acts as a true point light. It radiates light out from its source and it is affected by the objects in front of it. You can see the shadow of my engineer in front. You can also see that through this wall we've left a hole and it's, light, it's lit up over here. Because that hole sees all the way through to the spotlight, the light passes through. One thing to note between the differences of these lights is that dynamic point lights processing wise are more expensive in processing time, which results in the more dynamic lights you have, the lower your performance. That's why the interior lights behave in such a simple way to make them a bit more efficient. And because of the way that spotlights behave, when you have a whole lot of them together, they do some strange things. So before we go through all of the settings of the lights, let's hop outside to where I've set up a demonstration of what can go wrong with spotlights when you have a lot of them. So if we have a look up on the roof here, we can see this amazing glow. Now if I had these spotlights all spread out, some of them would not actually be shining. They wouldn't be casting any lights. They wouldn't be lighting up any object whatsoever. It's not just the glow that's affected, it's actually the light output that gets cut off. And if you have a very long hallway in a ship that's got multiple spotlights or a base that's got multiple spotlights, you will notice this effect. So it's important to limit the use of spotlights to where they're going to have the most impact. Limit them to where you'll see that the point light matters, where it's most interesting or anything along those lines. So we'll turn those off and we'll go back to these interior lights. Now I've set up two of them so that we can show the difference between the values that you can set. You can set up your color with a standard RGB value. So we'll make one of these lights cyan and one of these lights pink, magenta-ish. We'll reduce their radius down to about six meters. And then we'll have a look at each of the individual settings. So, We've got the radius setting. That one's fairly clear. It's the amount of distance that the light can travel out from the source. And it goes all the way up to 20 meters on the interior lights and well beyond 100 meters on the spotlights. Fall off affects how the light degrades as it goes away from the center of the light source. So, if you increase this to its maximum, the light will degrade very little towards the edge. So you can see the difference here. This one has its fall off at maximum and it's behaving a bit like a stage spotlight. There's a sharp cutoff. Whereas this one with its no more normal setting kind of blends towards the edge. It still does have a fairly clear edge, but it does have a bit more blending. So that's what you use Fallout for. 
we look at the next setting, that's intensity. That's simply how much light is added to the scene. So if we brighten that up, you can see that the cyan light gets brighter and less bright. So the final setting to look at is blink interval, blink length and blink offset. These all work together. Your blink interval is the time between when the light switches on and when it next switches on with an off cycle in between those. So if we set this to say, let's do two seconds. That means that there will be two seconds between when the light flicks on and the next time it flicks on. This 10% is the time that the light will stay on out of that two seconds. So if we put this up to about 50%, the light will be on half of the time. If we put it up to 98%, it'll almost always be on. There'll be only a fraction of a blip, like we just saw there, where it'll actually be off. So if we drop this down to somewhere around 25%, we can then have a look at blink offset. So let's set up the right hand light to be the same. If we set our blink interval to two seconds, our blink length to 25%. So we can see they're flashing on and off together. Blink offset is also a percentage of the blink interval. If you want the two lights offset by half a second in this scenario, you'd need to push this up to 25%. Because 25% of two seconds is half a second. It's a quarter of it. So we can see that they're going on and off in sequence. If we put it to 50%, they'll be operating perfectly opposite one another. So those are all of the settings that you'll need to look at for interior lights and spotlights have all the same settings. I think now's a great time for us to have a look at some pretty good examples of lighting that I found on the workshop and at the end I'll show you a little bit of fun that I had with some lights uh, last Christmas. First up we've got a shot down a corridor that exists in Duck Roll's Escape from Mars scenario. This is a really well lit scene. When you enter this corridor you can feel the foreboding energy because of these red spotlights that are placed down the corridor. The way that he's created these spotlights is with a small reactor attached to a small ship spotlight. By using creative mode you can actually embed these within the voxels and that allows you to correctly place them at these odd angles. And I think this is a really good use of the lighting engine in Space Engineers and shows off the beauty of the game. The next example comes from Jura 7's Leviathan ship. This has to be one of my all time favorite ships I've found on the workshop. The angles, the lines, the curves within this ship are phenomenally well put together. And the lighting enhances that aspect. You can see that he's used the light to highlight where those curves are and leave the rest of the room in darkness. There's also a clever trick he's done too, which is the interior turret is placed within the dark area. This will make it harder to see if you're attacking the ship, but also make it a bit more dynamic when the muzzle flash starts going off from that turret. The next example is less about the lighting and more about the way the lights are attached to objects. By using pillars and attaching a, an interior light to the base of them, you can make a room look like it's got hanging lights or spotlights without those performance penalties I mentioned with regard to spotlights. If you carefully examine how far the light is going from the object so that you only light up specifically what you want, you can fake the look of a spotlight for much less resources. And this little scene comes from Fela Vendel's support ship Alesh, another brilliant build on the workshop. The final workshop example comes from the Cedar Colonial ship by Leonza GT. Here we can see the use of that blink offset parameter. By offsetting each of these lights slightly more than the next, 
you get this feeling of the landing lights moving forward. It's a simple but pretty effective way of using the blink offset parameter in a somewhat more dynamic way. And then there's this. To attempt to emulate the flickering light from a fireplace, I placed down a whole bunch of reactors with interior lights on them with random blink setting differentiations so that they were all popping on and off at different times. I also put down a light that created a diffuse constant background glow so that it never completely dimmed. The idea being that it made it feel more like we were standing around a fireplace in the middle of winter for Christmas. And then, just to add to it, I set blinking lights all over the Christmas tree, all with slightly different offsets, so again, twinkling like stars. Well there you have it, there's my guide on lighting, and hopefully some of those examples have given you some inspiration about how you might use lighting in your own builds. There's more to come in this tutorial series, the next one might even be something semi-destructive, so I'll see you then. Thank you.